I'm Terry David Mulligan, and this is our somewhat food day in Canada food special on Tasty Room Radio. I have Ned Bell, great friend, um, uh, on the Zoom phone and, and on the actual phone phone. And we're just, we're talking back and forth. You can see this, by the way, if you go to mulliganstew.ca tasting room, you can see this Zoom interview as well. Because you know, let's face it, he's a good looking guy. <laughs> Um, I see you have your mask on, or sort of handy. I do, I do. This is uh, this is this is our masks. Yeah, yeah. These are our masks for mm -hmm. uh, for our, our team at the Naramata Inn. Obviously, we're uh, living in a whole new world, Terry, as you know all too well. And uh, you know, we're we're living to very high standards of health and safety at the Naramata Inn. And, and you know, I'm so excited. I'm back home. Are you kidding me? This is like this is the best thing ever. <laughs> and, and actually, I've said this, and I'm not slapping myself on the back. I'm just saying the journey for you, in part, started uh, on our veranda on the Naramata bench because that's where you met Kate. T TDM, you get uh, full credit. Full for credit. Change it, change it. Actually, I should give full credit to Meg, but yeah, you get true. full credit for uh, for introducing me to uh, to my wife Kate, and uh, you know it all started on the on the back porch at that phenomenal red barn property right on the bench here in Aramata. And of course, uh, at the time we didn't have uh, Roche as a neighbor. I love that winery at the bottom of the drive now. That's fantastic. Incredible. Now, uh, let's just talk about uh, all things uh, Ned and Kate first. Uh, give us a, a, normally I ask people that I truly care about, uh, how, how have the first six months been? How have you done? Um, but then you have a much larger uh, story to tell, uh, Kate's battle with cancer. Uh, how is everybody now? Yeah, thanks, Terry, for asking. Um, Kate's had a two-year journey with uh, breast cancer. She actually had her most recent surgery just this past Friday down on the coast, and mm -hmm. so uh, she's still down in Vancouver for the next 10 days. Um, she, you know what, BC Cancer Agency, her surgeons, her support network, her, yeah. her team Kate, hashtag team Kate, has been uh, extraordinary. And you know what, uh, I'll tell you, women are, are unbelievable creatures and uh, my wife is no different. The, uh, the battle, the fight, uh, you know, and now in the recovery and rehab stage of this journey is, uh, is pretty spectacular to witness and certainly support to the best of our ability. My sons, my three boys and I, and, uh, and her, her incredible family, you know, but truthfully, Terry, we are an incredibly fortunate family. We're, we're through the biggest scare, and now we're just on to the uh, keeping everything else away. And you never don't ever relax. You just take it with you on your journey, right? You, you go through the experience, but always it's there. You, you focus, you ever watchful of health. Um, uh, little things, all the things that we maybe even take for granted, right? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, her health, uh, actually, you know what, I'll be honest, one of the reasons why we're back in the Okanagan was because of the journey that she went through over the last yeah. two years. When she came through, uh, you know, when she was officially, uh, you know, told that, that she was cancer-free yeah. after the, uh, you know, the, the chemo and the radiation and the, and the removal, um, we just looked at each other and said, you know, what are we waiting for? <laughs> you know, like, let's just get out of here. And yeah. you know, the, the, uh, the Naramata Inn project actually took us two years to, uh, to pull together. We were, we were already in the process of acquiring the inn uh, before we found out that Kate had breast cancer in late July of two years ago. Sure. And, uh, and then of course we found out. And so we had to, pushed it to the back burner to a certain degree. Although my, my business partner, Paul and his wife, Maria, they, um, you know, they, they showed such, uh, such support for us as a family and, and Paul and his incredible steady hands. He said, you know what, pal, these things have a way of taking their time and uh, let's just see how it goes. And of course we focused entirely on Kate's journey and, and during the entire time, the project was ticking along and, we finally acquired it on the 21st of February, it being the Naramata Heritage Inn and Spa. And we then quickly went through uh, 
you know, fairly significant renovation. Um, you know, you throw in a little pandemic into the middle of all of that. And uh, we reopened uh, in early June as the Naramata Inn. And we, uh, we feel very lucky. You know, you got to you got to jump out of the airplane and hope the parachute opens. And my family has been very fortunate and uh, the parachute opened. That was a metaphor. We're going to talk in metaphors here. Come on. Um, I, I actually, you beat me to the question because I was going to say, which came first, the, uh, the inn or the, or the need to get out of Vancouver and, and, and reinvent yourself. Uh, how do the boys like to move? <laughs> well, um, three of my sons, or I have three sons, only two of them made the trip. My oldest boy, Finn, stayed in Vancouver. He's, uh, he's currently in college and working right. and, uh, you know, loves the life without his dad sticking around and being a pain in his butt. Max and Jet, the, the younger boys, 10 and 4, they're living the life. I mean, they're behind the boat every day. They're, you know, they're on their bikes every day. You know, Naramata Village... The bench, as you know, and the whole region is pretty special, but the village of Naramata specifically yeah. is th this little magical hamlet that just is, it's like built for children. You know? here's, here's, the, here's the deal. I want part of Naramata village to grow up, but I don't want it to grow up so that it, it, it uh, lessens the, the, the wonderful um, uh, place, destination that it is. Some of the buildings have been shuttered, the, uh, the, the stores there, they got that great um, uh, cheese section, they got the cold wines, but I would love to see some other shops, that's all, just small places. Yeah, I agree. Well, as you know, the uh, Naramata Wine Vault maybe was uh, one of the first catalysts of that reinvention. Sure. Now with, with our project here at the Naramata Inn, and what I really hope over the next number of years is that we'll have a collection of complimentary businesses here in the village that will bring more yeah. people here. You know, sure. the grocery store, the grocery store is great, but it could be better. The coffee shops are great. Uh, but you know what? We need, we need a little bit more of everything here, including <laughs> another, another restaurant or two. And we need, Truthfully, some businesses that are open, you know, if not year round, close to it. And, exactly. And, you know, consistently open, that would help. And, uh, you know, we're going to stay open until the end of December and then close January, February, reopen in March. And, you know, this is really our learn to run year. And I'll, I'll be honest here, we've done 100 covers every night since we opened. It's been actually kind of extraordinary. Is that a 50%? Uh, I would say it's about 70% and okay. the only because we have uh, two large verandas that yeah. we're able to uh, see people on. So the dining room is 50%, but the verandas uh, give us a bit more space. That's fantastic. God bless that veranda. Right. It's such a, I mean, the Naramata Heritage Inn is, oh. you know, it's such you know, an unbelievable building. We stayed there when we were shooting Hollywood and Vines with, uh, what was the young man I was with? Oh, Jason Priestley. And, <laughs> and, uh, and we still talk about it. I don't think he hasn't made the connection. I don't know if he's heard this story. I can't wait to tell him and show uh, I can't him. Wait. I can't wait for you guys to come back and do something else here together. We should do a fun food and wine and, and you know, celebrity something extraordinary. Only if you promise to uh, drive the boat. I, I will drive the boat. I never forgot the grin on your that? face. I will. Remember, remember that? Yeah. Oh, sure. Of course. Now, um, Let's talk about, uh, uh, I, I know the rooms are not your primary focus, but just working out from those rooms, did, uh, they were heritage rooms with, with, with you know, the, the furniture. So, I mean, the rooms have been, have, have been in existence since 1906, but, and some of the uh, um, heirlooms had, had stayed. Have the rooms changed at all or is it still that feel? Yeah, so the, the house actually was born in or uh, built in 1908 by okay. J.M. J. M. Robinson. He's a, a neat guy originally from Winnipeg, one of the first millionaires in Winnipeg, and made a bunch of money in gold in Ontario, and then came to Naramata, or the Okanagan specifically, thinking that he was going to find gold. He found gold of a different type in fruit, and uh, he founded Peachland, Summerland, yeah. and Naramata. Um, so this was Hotel Naramata since 1908. It's been a girls' school over its life. It's been a hotel a number of times. It's been his family home a number of times. Yep. Um, there is an absolutely a, a still a heritage feel to the building itself, although we, myself and Paul and Kate and Maria are, are, you know, are the 
four of us really have unique expertises and Maria is, is on the design side. Wow. And so there's a, a sense of, of heritage meets modernity. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, new beds, new sheets, new, new, uh, new accoutrement, so to speak. But it's still, you know, thin walls, 1908, it's 112 years old. You know, there's, there's history and character here. It, it's reminiscent of, you know, the magic that is Sioux Carver House or Fogo Island or Langdon Hall or yeah. you know, certain incredible places in Tofino. Like you yeah. can't buy a place like this, although we did, or, you, you know, you wouldn't be able to build this anywhere except here. And uh, we feel very lucky. So now the, the restaurant has had times when it's been, the, the restaurant has had times when it's been glorious and other times when it's been less than that. Um, but you were going to bring your own sense to it. You were going to bring your own style and design. Um, how did it finally shape for you what you wanted that room to be? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I've been cooking for 30 years and uh, I got bored of my food. And, you know, a number of years ago, I, it, you know, it's like, Billy Joel having to sing Piano Man over and over and over. You know, you just get tired of Piano Man. And I got tired of my signature dishes. I got tired of my own food. I felt like I lost the creative juice that I needed to really be at the top of my game. And, you know, I got lazy, truthfully. And, uh, you know, when we decided to come to the Okanagan, I, I promised myself a, a number of things creatively. I said, I will not cook my signature dishes anymore. And I will only cook food and only allow ingredients to be on the menu that are from here. Okay. So we are, we are 100% uh, locally sourced. I have eyes on every single ingredient. And that, that's pretty spectacular. And, uh, you know, it's realistically, it's a chef's dream. I know that. Um, but the food really is a celebration of Naramata with French technique. I call it French Naramation. Um, you know, it's, uh, it really is, you know, Naramata first, the South Okanagan, followed by, you know, the greater Okanagan, Thompson region, uh, you know, of course, into Coston and, and, and all the wonderful places south of us. And then, and then the, I give myself a little bit of license to bring seafood up from the coast. Sure. But other than that, we have nothing else on the menu that comes from elsewhere. And that includes lemons. I'm not, I don't allow lemons in my kitchen. We only use verjou that we made ourselves. Um, you know, we, we just are totally committed to this taste of place. This, this, you know, what I tell my guests is like, you can only have this dinner here. And that is a pretty powerful ah. statement. And, you know, one that I think will allow me to have such a unique taste of place. And, you know, the menu will change constantly. We've only been open for three weeks and I'll be going through a, my third menu change next week. So, you know, we, we're changing every day something changes. Because are, you farmers, changing, are you changing or are you getting feedback from the tables? No, I mean, it's, it, it, it's really, a, a, we're being guided by the farmers. We, you know, what the farmers sure. let us know on Monday, what they're pulling that week, yep. we then tweak the menu to that. Yep. And, you know, it takes a lot of work. It's obviously a big creative push on my team. But, you know, we, we frame it so that, you know, we know we're going to have a, a beef on the menu, a fish on the menu, a duck on the menu, you know, uh, et cetera. And then we, the, the garnish is really what changes constantly. And the guests have just absolutely been over the moon excited about how tasty the food is. And, and that's really all done in the field. And it's no different than, than grapes that go into the wine that make the incredible uh, juice that's in the bottle, you know, like for me, if the farmer does his or her job or the fisher harvests the fish well, we are, uh, we're lucky because it makes our, our life a little easier. And as you schooled me years ago, there's no greater um, pairing than wines and food grown in the same soil, the same terroir. It, it's funny, different. you know, yesterday we, I was at uh, Rob Van Westen's farm up on Booth Road and we were harvesting Lapin cherries and yep. he gave me he gave me a bottle of vulture and I came back to the kitchen and I made this incredible Naramata honey, Lapin cherry, vulture wine sort of glaze that we served with our duck breast last night. I'm telling you, Terry, I don't know that I've ever tasted anything that's more delicious and more of the moment and also of the place, you know, like 
that is Nermation cuisine. And it's just based in sort of French technique. And, and hey, I mean, throw in a chef that was born uh, 20 minutes from here. It's pretty cool. Okay, here's the deal. So if that's as good as you say, and I don't doubt you, will that become a signature dish or are there no more signature dishes? Oh, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to building new signature dishes. Okay. I just, you know, my, I used to call my food globally inspired and locally created. And so that was Asian, South Asian. Yeah. You know, my signature dish at the Four Seasons was a Dungeness crab taco with a maple miso, you know, soy lime glaze. And it was delicious. Don't get me wrong. But it just doesn't, it doesn't have a place in Naramata. It has no relevance to Naramata. I want... I want the food of Naramata to, hold on one second, I got a call coming in. I want the food of, um, of this incredible place to be the star. I want the farmers to be the star. I want the terroir to be the star. And you know what, Terry, honestly, yeah. I have been, never been so excited to cook again because it's just so goddamn delicious up here. <laughs> wow. Uh, and and uh, I'm going to ask you to show me the kitchen in just a second, but uh, tell me about, you needed a couple of uh, serious troopers in the kitchen. Uh, Stacey Johnson and Manette Lots, the Lots. Um, uh, wh why them? Oh, my goodness. Well, first of all, because they're incredibly talented. Yeah. Second of all, because they, they fell in love with this place. Last year, they did an event uh, up at Sea Later Ranch last summer. And Stacy um, was my sous chef at uh, Oceanwise for the last four years, and Minette, her partner in life and also in the kitchen, uh, ran a place called The Garden in Strathcona down in Vancouver. They're both originally from Regina, and they want to do uh, something like this one day back home in Saskatchewan. And I said, hey, come and join me in Armada. <laughs> let's cook our asses off, and let's have a ton of fun opening up this, you know, unbelievable project uh you know they they have just been such rock stars they've given it our all they've worked the bottling line at crush pad yeah. they've thinned they've thinned uh you know for steve lorney and chris coletta they've done all kinds of things you know they go harvesting it on their days off uh foraging with scott moran you know one of our local foragers like they're living the life and they're making our food more delicious and i'm lucky for it all right, uh, for those out there who are drooling, and I'm not talking about it, give, give us a couple of uh, highlights from the uh, menu that people seem to really gravitate. Yeah, well, as you know, I love sustainable seafood, and that's been my life for a sure. long time. So I still bring up uh, some incredible seafood from the West Coast. We have scallops uh, from Great Bear, and so we're, t we're pairing Great Bear scallops with orchard fruit. Uh, we have, uh, you know, some incredible farmers up here, Jordan at Unearthed, and Jerome at uh, Medley Organics. And so we're pulling in all the delicious things from them. Our duck dish is really a celebration of beets. Uh, so it's, you know, a cherry gastrique with, uh, with a beet puree and roasted beets uh, with uh, a dry aged duck breast that's unreal. Uh, we have a halibut dish that's a celebration of turnips from unearthed farms that has uh, savory clams, Salt Spring Island mussels and wild Pacific halibut served with this, this Chardonnay broth that's finished with cultured butter that is like quickly becoming a new signature of ours. And I mean, the, you know, the thing is, Terry, like I lived in Vancouver for a long time. I've cooked all over the world yeah. and all over this country. This place, Naramata and the Okanagan, as you know all too well, and, you know, we're so lucky in BC to have so many extraordinary food communities. Yeah. And, you know, specifically, of course, Canada as a whole, but, you know, whether it's Cowichan, whether it's Tofino, whether it's Comox, whether it's um, the Fraser Valley, Chilliwack, Agassiz, the Okanagan, I mean, God damn it, this province is delicious. And, you know, for me as a chef, uh, signature dishes are just born of the moment uh, and they change weekly because we're, you know, tweaking our menu all the time. Arctic char. Did you bring your Arctic char with you? I, I did. So that, that char is raised... Uh, in the middle of an apple orchard on yeah. Road 17 down in Oliver. I saw we that. Actually, you know who uh, whose farm that used to be? That used to be the De Silva farm years okay. ago. And so uh, the De Silva sister, a doctor down in Oliver, she grows all kinds of delicious things. And so once they harvest this year, we're going to pair the fish with the things that are grown in that orchard. Oh, and it's gonna fantastic. Be, like, what a taste of place that is, you know? 
Thank you so much. So um, you needed a wine director and a sommelier, and, um, and Emily Walker was your friend uh, working with you at the Four Seasons. Um, did you have to convince her to come or what? I think that she was the second phone call I made after we acquired the inn. I said, hey, Em, guess what? We're working together again. We're getting the band back together. <laughs> she said yes immediately. And we now have one of the best wine programs that I've ever seen. She gets to celebrate this place. We also have an international list. We have a great cocktail program, great beers. Like, we're doing it up, Terry. We want to be one of the best restaurants in the country. And by having... Uh, delicious wine program that Emily has created with our spectacular food from here in the region. We're, uh, we're getting off to a nice start. It's a great list. It truly is. It's a wonderful list. Uh, a little bit from everybody, not just the bench, right? Yeah. And, um, uh, I'm sure the international is going to be just as stunning. It, it's, it's fantastic. And, and, and actually, frankly, the people who can come stay there, enjoy your, your culinary talents, go back to their rooms, go, go down the trail, go biking, go swim, whatever. They'll never, never forget it. Yeah, I agree. It's, a, it's an incredible place. We feel very fortunate. Uh, you know, there's so much to do here. It's so tasty. It's so delicious. We have an incredible team. And the people that are visiting Naramata, already Naramata is a world-class destination. It's, there's a piece of heaven here. There's a piece of magic here that just exists in this little village. And we feel really lucky to have a restaurant right smack dab in the middle of it all. And you've come full circle. Uh, yeah, I was literally born 20 minutes from here. I, I, this is home for me. You know, I tried this what, 12 years ago in, at Cabana in Kelowna and, yeah. uh, you know, d different life, different time. The only difference now is that I have my incredible wife by my side. Maybe, maybe that's a lesson in and of itself. Um, you know, she never wanted to be in the restaurant business. And, and, you know, after her cancer journey, she, she, she said, you know what, let's go back to the Okanagan and swing for the sure. fences. And that's what we've done. Okay. Uh, now, Ned, we, we're going to do a second uh, uh, conversation when I'm physically there so I can actually see and smell it and taste it and, and experience the whole nine yards. I just don't know when the hell I'm going to get off this piece of rock. Well, yeah. There. Well, we'd love to have you up here, obviously, only if you bring Meg, though. Gotta. Yeah. I have to. Now, can I see the kitchen? Yes, you want to see the kitchen? I'll take yeah. you there. Yeah, because, you got, you, there. because you got to do your own kitchen. Well, and I did. I, I built a dream kitchen. First of all, I'm actually in one of our wine rooms. There's a couple of Emily's wine fridges. Do it like much music, buddy. You can do it. <laughs> then I'll, I'll, I'll take you through the dining room. Here's, uh, here's the dining room. There's the bar. Look at those chandeliers. Nice. And then as we... And then we're off to the right. That's right. There you are. There wow. is our. Look wow, at look at that line. Isn't that incredible? There's that our is fantastic. Stacey, Lee. Say hi, guys. There's Taylor, Stacy, and Lee working away. That's that's the dream right there. That's oh, uh, we're making fresh gnocchi as we speak. Look at that. <laughs> right? Incredible. Wow. Pretty uh for a chef who was born 20 minutes from here to get to build his, uh, his signature kitchen in this incredible place. Uh, I don't know what I did right, Terry, but uh, I, seem to be, uh, I seem to be a lucky dude. Lucky. Say hello to Kate and the boys. Uh, we hope you get up there as soon as possible. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome anytime. And uh, let, me, let me know ahead of time because the inn's sold out. We need to get you a room. Yeah. And bring uh, that Jason Priestley guy. Okay. Thanks. See you, bud. Ned Bell.